Hi, I'm Dante Ferrigno. If you've been coming to my channel for a while, you know I do tend to share the bits of my life with you that include <clears throat> not only this diet, but also my faith. Um, I have from the very beginning, so for those of you who tune in to see more about meat, this one's going to be a little bit more geared towards something else. And for those of you who enjoy the faithful talks that I have, this should be a good one. I hope you'll stick around. been what I thought was a healthy, objective skeptic in my life. But an evangelist friend of mine recently pointed out that it's objective optimism that's healthy. Because for one, based on the mandates and the promises, it's what we should expect. But number two, it's easy to get caught up in self-pity when you don't like what you see going on around you or in the world. Or both. I'd say subjective pessimism is a good way to describe that self-pity. If you find yourself feeling pessimistic about your future, own up to that nonsense and confess that self-pity. Make your request known to God and have faith. I know you might say, but so-and-so is causing X, Y, Z to happen, and our cause will be lost if fill in the blank. Problem is, you have no control over that X, Y, Z. All you can do is what you're responsible for doing. Your job. Your role. Your duty. Whatever it is. And your integrity should be greater than the obnoxious people you don't like whether they're on TV or working with you. God is interested in your availability, not your ability. And you're not available if you're not taking care of what you're responsible for. What happened on my day job is a little too complicated to explain because I'm very close with my employer and that information is sensitive. I may put my life on display, but the people in my life that don't want that deserve privacy, so I can't go into detail about work. Suffice it to say I need another day job. I thought I had a solution to that just before Thanksgiving, but then I saw an email on Thanksgiving Day that pulled the rug right out from under me. As a matter of fact, I think my social media makes it harder for me to get some jobs. It's a shame, but I'm pretty sure it's true. As you can imagine these days, an outspoken, freedom-loving, meat-eating Christian with a heavy social media presence might have a hard time getting past today's modern HR professionals. As a result, my options are limited. But I'm not going to let that slow me down. I'm still going to keep speaking the truth. And I didn't let that become an excuse for me to seek comfort in unhealthy foods. So for the diet aspect of this video, I want to encourage you that even if you are down and out emotionally, you don't have to succumb. You can still maintain. And life is not perfect for a carnivore. That's one of the complaints I've heard about carnivore channels is we only share the good side and hide the bad. I've spoken about how this change in my way of eating has helped me overcome anxiety but I'm not free from it. I still get anxious and it affects my day, but I didn't go pig out on ice cream like I normally would have in the past. And even though I didn't get my morning exercise yesterday, I did go for a 40 pound ruck yesterday afternoon. Those were big victories for me on a day of sorrow. Bottom line is, you don't have to let these things stop you from doing what you know you need to do. And you can keep plugging away at what needs work. That's the minor message I wanna convey. As for the larger message, I want to share something that happened last night. I was watching The Chosen Season 1 just before bed, and I was very inspired by Episode 4, where Peter was in a jam, and he needed a miracle to happen. He knew he was out of time, but he decided to work through the night. It went terribly. He was an experienced commercial fisherman, but couldn't catch anything. His friends, who were also fishermen, showed up to help him, but they had no better luck. By morning, time was up and they all saw a gathering on the shore. Peter was sure it was the people coming to collect on his debt, but it was a group of people listening to a teacher. When Peter's brother recognized the teacher as the man he saw when he was listening to John the Baptist teaching the other day, the one called the Lamb of God, he got excited and told Peter who he was. Peter was still focused on his problem though and its urgency, but the Lord showed up at just the right time. As Peter was pulling in the shore to finish trying his fishing expedition, Jesus called out to Peter and asked him to throw in his net one more time. 
Peter explained that it was useless, but he obeyed anyway. And before long, the net was so full of fish he had to call his friends to run and help. The amazing catch was big enough to settle his debts and redeem him from destruction. I know the writers of The Chosen take a little bit of creative license in their presentation, but it presents it in an extremely plausible and realistic look at how the Lord deals with us. He lets us suffer through things for a little while sometimes because we need the lessons that those things teach us. But in the end, He's there for us all the time. He will not forsake you, even when you walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Many times in life there will be moments when people will think, I just can't get a break. You're trying and trying to move in the right direction, but everything's going badly and frustration sets in. It can feel like there are no answers in sight and you begin to feel like you're in that shadow of death moment. But I've had those moments many times already and I have seen the Lord deliver me from the pit to a position of honor time and again. Yesterday, after spending a long morning of doing what turned out to be fruitless effort, I tried making a video about sharpening knives that fizzled out. And then I tried making a video while rucking that afternoon, but I just couldn't get the words out. So I turned to prayer and deep introspection. Then seeing this episode of The Chosen, this reminder of how the Lord works with us in this life reminded me of the things that I had learned already about how God had always been there to deliver me when I turned to Him. Shortly after I fell asleep listening to episode 5, I remember my wife was asking me just before I fell asleep if I was still watching because my eyes were closed and I was smiling and I said, yes, I'm listening. It's so good. That's the last thing I remember. I got a great night's sleep after that and I woke up with a new attitude to start today with. And that's a good place to be because each day is all we have to work with. And starting with the right attitude is key in times of pressure. I'm just thankful to have his promises to allow my soul to rest when the world is telling me to panic. Though I'm often guilty of not doing it, that's the way I've learned is the proper way to deal with anxiety. Putting my faith in the confidence that his love brings. My flesh wants to give up, but my spirit is strong, so I press on trusting in all circumstances that the Lord has good things in store for me. And he has good things in store for all of those who turn to him for the answers in this life. If you don't know Jesus, I hope this message encourages you to seek him out. This life can be dark and confusing without his light, and I don't even want to think of the afterlife without him. And if you're a believer facing difficulties, I hope this message reminds you to listen to the voice of our shepherd. He will rescue you. Thanks for watching. If we pay extra, could we maybe get some grease or fat?